Hello, I'm Jason Narvi. I live in Chicago, Illinois. Um, I am very, very sorry that I couldn't be there this year. Um, this was the year that I really wanted to bring my son and daughter and say, look, those are the guys. Those are the guys I told you about. Those are the guys you're going to read about. And these are the families that helped him get through it. Um, this is a particularly poignant moment to meet with the Indianapolis families, the men that served. And it's not just because it's the 75th anniversary, though that's significant. This has been a hard year for our country. The whole, whole world has had a difficult year. And I think now more than ever, we need heroes. I think the Indianapolis crew is significant, though, in this particular moment. Right now, I'm hearing a lot of people say, I can't do it. I, I can't. I, I can't fix this. I can't get through what's going on. Not for my me, not for my family. I think we think of heroes as people that deal in impossibilities. And the sailors and Marines on the USS Indianapolis didn't deal in the impossible. They dealt, dealt with what was possible. They showed us what you can do, what Americans can do when you need to, when you need, need to dig deep and find what it is that keeps that fire in your belly. So this is the year I wanted to be able to look everyone in the face and say thank you for being the kind of heroes we need in difficult times. Not in the past, not 75 years ago, but now in 2020. So today I wanted to read a letter, share a letter with you from Mrs. Peggy Ott from Captain Charles McVeigh. This is October 3rd, 1945, my dear Mrs. Ott. It is with great sorrow that I, as commanding officer of the USS Indianapolis, write to you concerning your husband, Theodore Jean Ott. Yeoman First Class, United States Navy, who lost his life as a result of the sinking of the Indianapolis in the early morning hours of July 30th, 1945. The Indianapolis was en route to the Philippines from Guam after a run which set a new speed record from San Francisco. And after the delivery of an atomic bomb, she was approximately 450 miles from Lete when two heavy underwater explosions occurred on the starboard side forward. She filled rapidly with water through the gaping holes in her underwater body caused by this explosion and within 15 minutes sank. Many men lost their lives almost instantaneously. The exact manner in which your husband met his death is not known, but it is believed that he went down with his ship. The first group of survivors were picked up Thursday, August 2nd, 1945, and the rest of which I was one the next morning, bringing the total to 15 officers and 300 enlisted men. For days thereafter, the, the area where the ship went down and where any possible survivors could be was searched by ships and planes, but no other survivors were picked up. Nothing that I can say will lighten the burden which is yours at this time, but I do want you to know that your husband had done his part in a teamwork which made the Indianapolis an efficient fighting unit of the fleet. The surviving officers of my command join me in the expression of wholehearted sympathy to you in this great loss which you have sustained. Very sincerely, Charles B. McVeigh III, Captain U.S. Navy.